Hey there Arconiacs, this is another theory video for season 3 of Omit B. This idea spawned from a comment I got early on in the season, but I haven't been able to find it. And I wasn't sure how I felt about it even more so, I wasn't sure how to word it all. And I don't think the comment went as far as I have with this idea, but please, if this was you, let me know. And I'll pin you down into the description. It all revolves around the idea of Ben Glenroy being secretly queer. I didn't see it, but I decided to take a look at everything we know about Ben, everything he said and done, and maybe this could track. Now I know a lot of people want to say that this is totally unfounded, and yes, the tale I'm going to spin has its holes, but it seems a lot more realistic than one would think. When watching back at every moment involving Ben this season, the one that stood out was when Mabel and Tobert slip into the armoire to hide from Dickie in the penthouse. There was a cutout of Ben in the closet, and I thought it was kind of creepy at first, but then I thought Ben hiding in the armoire could be a metaphor for Ben being closeted, a physical manifestation of a common metaphor for people who have not disclosed their sexual orientation. This could be a very clear reference to that. So the idea had my curiosity, but then this had my attention. Now a lot of this is just going to be opinion or conjecture or whatever you want to call it, but the character of Ben to me does give out some queer vibes. Even back in his girl cop days, Ben Glenroy is playing a high schooler around the 90s, late 90s, early 2000s. The frosted hair and the puka shell necklace are iconic at the time. I was a high schooler in this time, so I personally very much remember when these things were popular. I realized that though he is a cop, this character isn't masculine at all. Not to say that cops must be, but the pink shirt, the slight pushing out of the hips, this shows for very young girls. Ben's co-star in Girl Cop seems to be around or portrayed as the same age as Ben and their relationship appears to be just platonic. Now this could be because of actual age differences, but you can tell that they are friends and partners and there's no sexual tension that appears to be between them. Mabel was excited to be in the same room as Ben Glenroy, but she also made it very clear that she didn't see him in a sex symbol kind of way, just a fan of his work, someone that was very important to her. His character in Girl Cop was very non-threatening. Ben was around 50 or so when he died, and though the world could use more progression, we are leaps and bounds above where we were in the 90s and in the early 2000s. Again, my experience doesn't talk for the world, but from what I remember of how American culture generally was, guys in high school that time, we didn't really wear pink shirts. It wasn't the norm. It was seen as very feminine. I don't mean to say that guys never wore pink, but I don't think it was very common. You would have been seen as girly or weak, or called gay as a derogatory term. This was the norm back then, and I'm sure these kind of comments were made about the character, at the very least, would have been by guys of that age. So if Ben was queer, I think it would have been hard for an actor like him to come out. The fear of how he would have been seen by his family, by the world in general, by his female fans. He may have felt it was none of their business. He couldn't even get married at that time. This could be why he felt jealous of his actor friends, the ones getting married with their families, knowing that it was something that he could never have. Out of frustration, he could have wanted to reaffirm his masculinity, and that led him to doing something like Cobro, that again was said to shed labels. And yes, this all is a stretch, but there are some other things that I feel could hint to this. Upon the first meeting for the table read of Death Rattle, one of the first things Ben does was mention how attractive Ty was. When talking to Charles, who didn't remember that Ben was cast in Brazos as Timothy Bush, Charles asks if he acted a lot with his hands. Now, it is very stereotypical, but some queer men are known to be animated and talk a lot with their hands. Also, when he reappears at Oliver's after leaving the hospital, he says mama's back, not daddy's back. Oh, this could be a reference to something, but I couldn't figure out what it was. 
and maybe, just maybe, Ben's opening line on stage, what turned me into a creature of the night, could be a reference to this. More specifically, a reference to the song Touch a Touch a Touch Me from Rocky Horror Picture Show, another musical that gives the message that it's okay for all of us to be sexual beings and enjoy it without guilt. The poster outside of his dressing room does bear some resemblance to that of Rocky Horror, but all of it together, it does seem likely. But what would or could all this do with the murder? Well, that would make Cliff the number one suspect. The two could have easily been in a relationship, or something more likely, Ben being queer is something that was somewhat of an open secret in some circles. Circles Cliff would be aware of. Cliff could make a pass at Ben, but was denied because Ben felt he was too young. A reason for Ben calling Cliff a boy. I don't think Cliff could have done it. I think he's too controlled by his mother. And with the themes of mothers and protection, it's more likely that she wanted to protect her son from going after or being with the man who was always filled with so much controversy. Or if that's not enough, Donna could be like Oliver in episode 6, wanting to keep her theater dream alive. We know she talked to Maxine, the theater critic, at Ben's funeral, and that Maxine was going to pan the show, and she didn't want that on her resume. So in order to ensure the show didn't go on, she had to get rid of the star. Now I know this one is out there, but I had to get at least one more Big Theory video out there before we got too close and figured out who the killer was for sure. I've got a couple more video ideas that I think I'll be at least one more before the end of the season and a couple afterwards. But please let me know your thoughts below. Thank you guys for watching. My name is Dallas, and I'll catch you on the rooftop.